usni pite bona usni pite una pogu sa wengine baba uni guse usni pite bona usni pite Una pogu sa wengine baba uni guse usini pite bona usini pite una pogu sa wengine uni guse usini pite bona Usini pite una pogu sa wengine naomba uniguse Usini pite Yesu Usini pite baba una pogu sa wengine naomba uniguse Usini pite Yesu Usini pite una pogu sa wengine naomba uniguse Amen 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 glory to God I hope you're doing good welcome 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 Hallelujah welcome to this installment today I hope you're doing good whatever you are for those of us in um, the United States we thank God today is July 4th the day that we celebrate independence as a nation uh, uh, it's a day of nationhood it's a day of acknowledging our freedom acknowledging our independence from masters that were cruel and we thank God we thank God for that God wants us to be a free people to have freedom of will freedom of choice freedom of um, uh, from oppression in all manners amen and I tell you what the Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed God is all about freedom hallelujah freedom from sin freedom from oppression freedom from the kingdom of darkness and the Bible also says our freedom is not for us to go live the way we want but so that we can serve the Lord our God without hindrance amen and so welcome in that spirit of independence in that spirit of freedom as we um, continue today with our series gird up the loins of your mind I want to thank God for this uh, series as we started last Sunday and I know that God has great things even as we move forward into deeper into this series. Amen. He is our God and he receives the glory and he receives the honor for everything that we do. Hallelujah. So I want you to get into that mindset. This is about pleasing the Lord. This is about honoring the Lord. This is about preaching Jesus Christ and his kingdom. So come on, let's go together deeper into the things of God. Amen. Let's pray and we'll be right off. Father, we thank you and bless you and worship you, O oh God, in the beauty of your holiness. There is no other God like you in heaven, on earth, or even under the earth. And Father, we thank you for the privilege to be on the airwaves today, sharing your word, publicizing the name of Jesus Christ, because he is the Savior of the world. And the Bible says there is salvation in none other except in Jesus Christ. And so we take great delight and honor and privilege in being partakers of this faith and partakers of this inheritance. And we want to let others know of the goodness of our God and of the plans of our God to redeem mankind and to give them life abundantly through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, even for your word as you continue to teach us today concerning being sober in our minds, in our spirits, in our bodies, so that we can do the work you've called us to do and be witnesses unto the things of the kingdom of light 
in an effective way. We thank you and bless you, Jesus. Thank you for everyone coming. Bless them, O oh God. Hasten their steps. Unstop their ears. Lord, touch their hearts. Help them to be able to hear this word and let it penetrate deep into their core of their being and let it be transformative. Thank you, Lord God, even for those who will hear it later. May your anointing rest upon this word and continue to keep it fresh for that one who will come to it later, oh God. Thank you because you're able and there is nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, my friends, I am so pumped up for the Lord. I am grateful for his grace and I thank him for what he has in store for us today. So without further ado, I have our verse there for today. But before we go to that, let me just kind of recap what we learned last Sunday. We started this new series and we're calling it Guard Up the Loins of Your Mind, meaning that we need to encircle our minds with the belt sort of so that we constrain it and give it a parameter, a perimeter rather of how far it can go. Hallelujah. We are not going to allow our minds to wander into all sorts of directions and take in all manner of things. We want to set the word, a mind, I mean, our minds on the word of God and keep it within the parameters of the word of God. Amen. Why is that important? It is critical that we do that because we learned last Sunday that as a man thinks, so is he. As you and I think, so are we. Our minds determine our emotions or feelings, which ultimately determine our character and temperament. And so it is critical. You cannot be different from what your mind is thinking. You cannot produce a lifestyle, a conduct that is different from what your thoughts are. Amen. And we said our mind in that scripture that we read last time had to do with our deep thoughts, our meditations. Amen. So whatever things that we are dwelling on, whatever things that our minds are preoccupied with, those are the things that will come out of us as an expression in feelings or in actions. Amen. We also learned that the, the, the uh, uh, carnal mind, a mind that has not been transformed by the spirit of God, by the word of God, a mind that has not been regenerated, a mind that has not been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ is called a carnal mind. And such a mind is an enemy of our souls. Why? Because it is not subject to the law of God. Neither can it be. It is not adherent to the word of God. It is not compliant to the word of God. And that leads us astray into darkness and that eventually will harm us. You see, that's one way that the enemy works, all right? We learned that there are two enemies, the devil and the carnal mind. And when the enemy can attack you, he attacks in different ways. But one of the ways that he is keen to do is he uses our own mind. If he can keep it carnal, if he can keep it contradictory to the word of God, if he, if he can keep it resistant and disobedient, to the word of God, that is a sure way to get us destroyed. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whenever the enemy shows up at your doorsteps, you can be assured of this. He has either come to steal from you, to kill you, or to destroy you. All right? He has no other objective. The Bible says that he is going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The enemy's objective his IMO is to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus, because you came so that my friends and I can have everlasting life. Amen. And we also learned that the carnal mind is continuously wicked. There is nothing that carnal mind can come up with that is helpful. The carnal mind is set to contradict the word of God. And we saw like right from the beginning after creation, man falling. And from that point on his thoughts and his meditations and the intents of his heart were continuously evil. 
And God even himself testified of that and it repented him, excuse me, that he had created man. So moving, and I think last Sunday we stopped it saying we need to set a perimeter around our minds to tell our minds you cannot wander carelessly, unchecked. You can stay, you should stay within this perimeter. And the question was, where is that boundary? Where is that perimeter? Amen. And we're going to explore this as we go forward. But today I, I put our scripture verse over here and it says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So as a start off, one thing that we need to be clear about is that we are sober and we are vigilant. What does that mean? You see, you, you can't take, you cannot put in place uh, uh, guards. You cannot put in place a, a safety measure if you're intoxicated. When you're intoxicated, it, it, it means that you are not thinking right. You do not have proper and adequate understanding of what's going on around you. All right. And so the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom, whom he may devour. Soberness means you are not influenced by an intoxicant such as alcohol. Now there are many intoxicants. Okay. Uh, 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 literally, but also figuratively. There are many things that influence our consciousness, influence our ability to think rationally, our ability to make right decisions. Anything that influences you to do a wrong thing in so far as the light of scripture is concerned is an intoxicant. And that could be in the form of alcohol. It could be in the form of any other drug of abuse. It could even be a sexual habit, a, 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 an uncontrolled greedy habit. It can be anything that causes you not to think and constrain and make the right decisions. So the Bible says, be sober. That is the beginning. That is where we need to start. You and I, think about somebody who's drunk on alcohol. Some of them may be sleepy. Some of them may be totally passed out. Some of them may uh, uh, begin expressing uncontrolled urges and, and uh, uh, lack their inhibition when it comes to some things. That's just how alcohol works, right? So that kind of a mind and person cannot make the right decisions because their ability to look at something safely and critically and execute a right decision in any given circumstance is impaired. All right. It is impaired. The Bible is warning us to be not like that, rather to be sober. The opposite of soberness is, is drunkenness. And the Bible says in Ephesians, uh, uh, chapter, is it five, chapter five, verse, um, 18, it says, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, meaning the Holy spirit. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. And what does the word dissipation means? mean the word dissipation simply means excessive drunk drinking ex lack of self-control being self-indulgent all right when you are drunk on wine you are self-indulgent you have no inhibition you are harmful the bible says excessive alcohol causes dissipation it causes self-indulgence. It causes harm. Rather, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. 
That is the critical first stone we need to lay in terms of keeping our minds in check. We have to be sober. We have to know at all times what's going on around us. Unfortunately, for some of us in, in Christendom, we've been lulled to sleep. We have no clue what's going on physically and even more so spiritually. Some of us don't even have a clue what times we're living in. Some of us don't even have a clue what's going on around us. But God wants us to be sober, to be vigilant, to know, to be aware of what's going on around us. Amen. And in, uh, uh, in, in the Amplified, actually, that word sober also means self-disciplined. You see, it's self. It is something you do for yourself. It is not someone else putting pressure on you as an individual. It is you making that decision from within to be disciplined. And that's one thing I like about, you know, we talked about freedom today being Independence Day. It, it, you want to make that decision to, to be disciplined. according to the word of God. You see, you didn't create yourself. God created you for his own glory. And so if there is anybody you ought to be subject to, anybody I need to be subject to is my maker and creator. Amen. And I know some of us are even trying to eliminate that. No, 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 that's not going to work because you didn't bring yourself here. There is a God in heaven who made you. And the Bible says, from him, all things came, and to him, all things return. One day, we are going back to him to account for our lives here below, all right? And so, it, it, the, the word be vigilant, it means to be alert, to be cautious at all times. To be alert, to be cautious at all times. You know, some of us are very careless, Christians included. We just say what we want to say, just do what we want to do, go where we want to go. We're never cautious. Consume everything that the TV puts in front of you. Anything that Facebook puts out, you're right there with it. YouTube, name them. We're not cautious. We're consuming everything that the world is throwing at us. That is dangerous. The Bible says that we need to be vigilant. We need to be alert. We need to be awake. We don't need to be sleepy, somber, confused, any of that. That's where we need to start. In girding up our minds, our minds have to be free from all intoxication. And then we can go on from there. As long as it is in, in, in intoxicated, it is already absorbing things it shouldn't. It's already being influenced by things it shouldn't. So we need to be sober, to be free of dissipation and intoxication. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says it's because our enemy is going around, roaring like a lion, wanting to find someone to destroy. The enemy wants to destroy us. You see, when you're intoxicated, you will be destroyed by the enemy because you will not know how to take precautions. You will not know how to run from a dangerous situation. You will not know which path to take that's going to be safe for you. Drunkenness is sin. And I don't just mean alcoholic drunkenness. Like I say, there are people drunk on too many things today. Some of us are drunk on, this, on the news. Some of us are drunk on, on uh, occultic practices. Some of us are drunk on our education. Some of us are drunk on sensual things. We are preoccupied by things that are contrary to the word of God. 
Some of us are drunk on certain emotions that have preoccupied our whole being. And we need to get away. We need to, to, to wash our minds clean from all those things and keep our, our minds sober and be alert, 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 physically, but also spiritually. Being alert means you are aware of your environment. You are aware of your circumstances. You are aware of what's going on in your environment and you are able to do something about it. You are able to interact with it in such a way as to be safe, but also to move into a, a, the right direction for your life. So I thank God for that message for today. We are continuing with this series come next Sunday by God's grace and if he wills and we will continue to dive deeper. But as you go today, I want you to thank God for your independence to make these decisions for yourself. And I want you to pray that God will help us to be soberized, if there is such a word to be made sober from whatever has caused us drunkenness. Whether it's a physical thing, an emotional thing, a spiritual thing, whatever it is, we want to be sober. We want to be alert so that we can move on into the right direction. Remember last Sunday we said the war going on in, into the future, the war that we're going to have to fight has to do with mind control. And we need to be able to identify the trickery of the enemy, identify the devices of the enemy and take action against them. As the Bible says, to gird up the loins of your mind is to encircle them and to be ready to take action. So with our sober minds, with our vigilant minds, we need to be able to take action. Amen. I'm going to stop there for today. I trust you're being blessed. Uh, share this video with someone, tag a friend, tell them Jesus loves them and has great plans for them. Father, we thank you and bless you for the opportunity to share your word. Lord, thank you for the ability to even articulate this. And I know that the Holy Spirit will continue to impress upon our hearts the truth here and, and help us to change and transform according to your will. Thank you, Lord, as we go into the new week, go before us, keep us, direct us, order our steps, oh God. Help us to, to, to meditate upon the word of truth that is able to save us and save our households. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, be blessed, friends. The Lord keep you. Till next time. Bye-bye.